dear students let us continue the study of explosives and explosions and in the previous modules we have studied what are explosives what are their types how explosion happen the various processes and in this particular module we shall deal with specific approach to scene of explosion blast residue collection packaging and then forwarding the explosive evidence dear students after studying this module you shall be able to know the overall rules for evidence collection especially focusing on the evidence from the scene where explosion has happened you shall be able to learn the methods of collection of explosive evidence from the blast scene there will be focus on and you will be able to learn the explosive detection canines that is the use of dogs the sniffer dogs electronic sniffer devices which are used and the significance of x ray detector in the scene then you shall be acquainted and get familiarized with the guidelines for forwarding evidence to the forensic laboratory so if we begin with the overall rules for evidence collection the first and foremost rule is to take the victims to the hospital moreover law enforcement will need to respond to hospital calls as evidence can be recorded from victims which are living and dead so i repeat here this is very very crucial the first and foremost rule is to take the victims to the hospital you should try to save lives as many possible and then you have to make sure that there are no suspected devices before evidence is collected make sure that there are no suspended devices which are present that might not have caused destruction that is unexploded bombs and they can cause further more so you should try to look at these suspected devices which may be present more at that scene then you have to be aware of the secondary hazards of the blast such as unstable structures damaged utilities hanging debris void spaces and other physical hazards possibility of secondary devices and attacks should not be overlooked and this type of event has targeted responders so you have to take precautions so that you protect yourself also when you reach such sign it's not that some hanging debris is there and it is falling on you and you also get hurt then use aerial photography the use of aerial photograph is often suggested as it helps in investigation by providing a wider view of the scene the photograph should be then provided to the laboratory use wire mesh screens wire mesh screen when used they will be helping to sort the debris of explosion as it can hurt your hands so in between your hands and the other you should use the wire mesh screen do not handle potential explosives yourself this is the next rule never collect an unexploded device as it may explode and cause loss to many other lives do not handle potential explosive yourself clear and secure the area and contact the bomb squad and because they are properly equipped to handle these situations the next rule is clear and secure the area a barricade can be placed around the area to preserve the evidence and control that can enter the scene so don't let other people enter only the officiating people those who are investigating or the authorized personals they should be allowed to be in call the bomb squad bomb squad member they are well equipped and they should deactivate the unexploded devices if there are any if a live bomb is found at the blast scene then bomb disposal squad has to be called upon immediately bomb disposal unit if we talk about bomb disposal unit personnel should always wear appropriate clothing 
to protect themselves. A bomb disposal suit is a heavy suit of body armor and it is designed to withstand the pressure release from a bomb and any projectiles the bomb may produce. Trained personnel attempting bomb disposal, they usually wear it and this should be a practice. The next rule is always photograph the item as found. Always photograph the item as it is found first, that is before touching or collecting it. Always note the item, its location, measure its distance from two or more fixed objects in the room on your scene diagram that you are making. Next rule is that always note the evidence and its location. It is important to note the nature of evidence which has been recovered and also the precise location from where it is recovered. Next rule that you have to follow is do not restrict the investigation to a limited area of the blast scene. When we say this that is do not restrict your search to a limited area, it is because the explosive evidence may be found at even farther places. During the collection of evidence, Latex gloves should be used to protect hands and to also avoid possible contamination. Search for far and wide from epicenter. Search far off areas also for possible fragments to be present there and the fragments may be found on rooftops, under the debris and even embedded in other objects or victims. The next rule that you have to follow is always use clean, suitable and unused containers. Always use clean, suitable and unused containers to collect the evidence and then label them properly. That is what is this you have collected and from where you have collected all that information should be there. The next rule is again a continuation here that is always label properly. It is very very crucial to label the evidence properly. And then yes, last but not the least, always maintain this chain of custody that is from first where it was received, then it was given to who, next person and then. So that entire thing has to be maintained along with the important important details of the evidence. Another thing that you have to keep in mind, the size of explosive does not matter. Never underestimate the power of an explosive device by its size because even small explosive devices can be very, very fatal and cause death and serious injury. Another thing that you have to keep in mind while collecting the evidence is collect the suit deposits also. The surfaces which are slightly far away such as rooftops and stationary vehicles are likely to collect the suit deposits from materials burnt during the explosion. And the kind of deposited suit can be specific to the explosive material, such evidences should be collected. Another thing you have to follow is interview the witness. If you find any witnesses to the blast, they should be properly interviewed. Witness reports are very useful for gathering information about the blast, details of the explosion and anything relevant such as sighting of some suspicious individuals during the plantation of bomb etc. And then the last rule which says is search for explosive device or bomb fragments. Experts can establish the kind of explosive device which has been used and can also make out its construction and its trigger mechanism once you have collected these fragments. And these fragments can help locate the bomb maker, particularly if a series of explosions have occurred over a period of time having the similar composition. So after knowing all these rules, let us proceed further. Particular terrorist organizations may be known for using a specific type of explosive. An investigation may often be conducted into the recent purchases of certain substances. 
and the government st generally strictly regulates explosives. So if an individual is purchasing a particular chemical, the same can be prosecuted. However, materials used in bombs are often stolen or smuggled into the country. And so the components may be more difficult to trace. You can see here in this particular figure, it shows approximately 4560 dynamite rods, 600 kilograms of explosives and thousands of detonators which were recovered during a security check. So these things also you have to keep in mind while doing the investigation. And further on, keep in mind that anything can be an evidence. This is very, very important. So collect everything which can direct towards the clues of the blast. And do not forget that anything can be evidence such as electronic board parts, the utensils or their parts thereof like detonators, tapes, wires, timers, switches and batteries because combining all of them, all these can be a very important part of the bomb. So as a vigil forensic scientist and investigator, you should keep always that yes, all these type of parts can be very important clue or evidence for you. Now after this, let us try to know about how the role of sniffer dogs is very important in investigating such scenes. The use of specially trained dogs is very popular. Perhaps it is one of the oldest methods of detecting explosives. And these canines are trained to use their exceptional sense of smell to detect and locate the presence of even the slightest trace of the explosive material. These dogs who are called as sniffer dogs may also be instructed to detect explosive scents on people and their clothing. So if they were carrying that particular explosive material, some smell will be along uh, in their body also and then these dogs, the sniffer dogs can easily detect them on the clothing and on people. So the sniffer dogs can be again of very, very help to you when you are doing such investigation. As the technology is moving further, there have been electronic sniffer devices. So just analogous to the, their dog smelling power, these electronic sniffer devices are there. The electronic sniffer devices are very similar to the sniffer dogs we can say. Explosives generally they give off certain aroma or scent you can say which the device can detect certain smell because of some gaseous volatile compound coming out of them which has a peculiar smell and the air is drawn through a filter and the plastic explosives are not easily detected by these devices and in those cases even the canines can serve well, that is the sniffer dogs will be able to help. So using combination of sniffer dogs and sniffer devices, one can easily locate if there are more of these bombs located or the persons who were carrying and were responsible for conducting that particular explosion. Now coming to another important instrument which will be of help, they are the X-ray detectors. X-ray techniques which are frequently used in the detection of explosive devices and particularly they are used when dealing with suspicious objects or containers. Dual energy technology simultaneously passes two X-ray beams into the item and one of these will detect the organic materials and they will be displayed as in red color. The other beam focuses on the inorganic material and they will be displayed as blue or green. 
and these color differences they will allow for the quick and efficient scanning of these items. So when these x-ray detectors are used, if there is some explosive device, if it is containing some organic compound then immediately you will get to notice the red color in that container even without opening the container and if it is containing inorganic compounds which are used inside these explosive then it will be displaying them as blue or green. So keeping this in mind you can easily detect that yes the explosive material may be there inside and then it can be further investigated. Now coming to the collection of explosive evidence. As a forensic expert, you will be required to visit a, a blast scene. And so understanding of some common methods of evidence collection from the blast scene is very very important for you. And what are the points that you have to keep in mind while collecting these evidence? Let us discuss them one by one. First is search the post blast debris that is after the explosion has happened but all debris is available then you have to search the post blast debris for the potential evidence which will definitely assist in the investigation. Not only that particular site where the debris is there the immediate impact is there you have to search the farther from the site of explosion also. Debris from an explosion may be burnt or scattered over a wide area. So pieces of an explosive device may be thrown farther from the site of an explosion. So an extensive search of the surroundings is necessary because we have studied that it will be so powerful that it can go in far away places. So it is very important that you look at the farther places from that particular position where the explosion has initiated. Another thing you have to keep in mind is sift through rubble. That is never sort the debris with bare hands as it might hurt you. So use the wire mesh screen for the same and sometimes there may be some more explosive material still there which may immediately explode so be cautious while you are searching through the rubble. Also another point you have to keep in mind is collect the electrical components of the explosive device. Electrical components of the explosive device may be available as fuses, battery components, wires and blasting caps and they all should be collected because they will be very important evidence for you. Also collect the components of IEDs. Since bombs are often concealed in various containers, the fragments of any possible containers should also be collected and that will also give you very important clues about the nature of the explosive material and the type of uh, explosion. Also collect the fragments of the pipe bomb. If it is the case of a pipe bomb then the pipe will, would have bursted and even the small pieces of this pipe they need to be collected and further they will be helpful in investigation. Collect clocks. Clocks are often indicating of time bomb mechanism inside the device. So if you can search and find the clocks then do collect the clocks as the evidence. Furthermore what you have to collect is collect the iron nails and ball bearings and these iron nails ball bearings are often used in the explosive device to cause greater destruction to those who are exposed. Also keep in mind to collect the remote controls if there are any. And these remote controls are often used to trigger the explosive device at the desired time. Collect cloth pins if any. Cloth pins are often used in improvised explosive devices that is IEDs to hold the components and mainly maintain the management of the explosive device. So these also need to be collected. Another very important evidence 
is the fingerprint. So collect the fingerprints which are found intact on the components of explosive device, bomb shells and on the other relevant evidences. And in such cases the fingerprints can be developed using suitable methods. And the fingerprints they provide greater chance of connecting the device to a particular individual because the fingerprint of found on that particular device if they are matching with the one of a particular person then yes that person is responsible for bringing them there and further investigation can be done. But while collecting fingerprints and all these you should wear gloves and put them in proper clean envelopes label them. So all these things you have to keep in mind otherwise your own fingerprints will destroy the fingerprints of the criminal which are there on these evidences. Also collect the porous materials or objects with cracks and ridges. Porous materials or objects with cracks and ridges they tend to collect a large amount of useful residues and mostly if the explosive what material it will be absorbed in them and so these can be utilized for further investigation. So do collect these. Also collect the materials from near the blast site including foam, rubber, pipe threads, cardboard or any rough surfaced items because these rough surfaced items will be immediately absorbing whatever if there are some chemical which are there in the explosive material then they will be absorbed and later on in investigation you can get sufficient clues about the nature of explosive material. Also collect the relevant extraneous matter like hair, fiber, dust, paint etc. Also remember to collect the tool marks if any and also collect the writings from the explosive device or its component parts. If there are any writings which are discovered on the device these should be collected and preserved after doing the photography and this may lead the investigating officer to the culprit. You have to also conduct swabbing. Swabbing will be used to collect suit deposits and other evidences in case of large immobile items such as buildings. So if there is some suit on the building obviously you cannot carry the building with you but yes the suit has to be taken along from, uh, with the help of swabbing and these swabs should be wet using methanol or isopropyl alcohol or acetone or distilled water before the collection. And then you should put them in a packet and take them with a labeled. Control samples should be collected away from the blast site and swab should be dried and stored in a sealable clean glass or plastic containers. The use of x-ray. The suspicious devices should be x-rayed for internal arrangements which will check or reveal the clockwork, batteries, precursion caps, switches and others. So after these things while collecting the evidence at the scene of blast, let us try to understand how the packaging of these evidence that you have collected that is the packaging of explosive evidence has to be done. The investigating officer should follow some important steps while packing these explosive evidence and you should be aware about all these. First is that the water soluble explosives and volatile residue they should be packed in airtight containers like they can be cleaned unused metal cans or glass jars or the sealable nylon bags. Some explosive residues are water soluble and they must be protected from moisture whereas other residues they have tendency to evaporate very quickly and they must be stored as soon as possible 
in airtight containers and using a clean unused metal cans, glass jars or sealable nylon bags. Furthermore, you have to keep in mind that do not pack jagged remains of a pipe bomb in a bag. Do not store the explosive residues in Ziploc bags. Do not fill the containers to the top. Do not leave the containers unpacked. It may cause breakage. And do not fill the evidence containers with packing materials such as shredded paper or vermiculite. Flash powder, remember, is very sensitive. So it should be packed in anti-static plastic bags or paper packages. Do not pack the bulk flash powder in metal containers or plastic bags because if it explodes, this will be again acting like a bomb. All the containers should be labeled before they are sent further. And the label should mention the type of material, the date of collection, the investigator's initial, the case name, number, and any other relevant detail. Now, after these evidence are collected and packaged from the scene of blast or explosion, let us try to understand how they are forwarded to the forensic laboratory where their further investigation can happen. While forwarding the explosive evidence to the laboratory, always send the evidence along with the forwarding letter with a brief history of the case and the details of the evidence and examination which is required. If possible, always submit the control samples and evidence in a separate package. For example, if soil from a blast site is submitted, then also collect a sample of similar soil from an area slightly away from the seat of the blast so that the soil which is away will not have the explosive material in that and the soil at the blast there will be explosive material and they can be further differentiated and analyzed as to what explosive material it contains. Similarly, if a portion of rubber molding with blast residue is submitted, also submit a clean area of the molding on which the impact of the blast is not there. The controls should be packed in the same manner as the samples with the residue but with proper labeling. Maximum information should be given to the laboratory according to the circumstances of the case including the pictures, diagrams, the witness statements, officers report of a blast scene. So all these are very very important clues in further solving this case. Send explosive evidence through special messenger and not by post. This is strictly prohibited. Send only representative sample of the explosive and not the whole bulk because even while transportation it will be risky. Pack the initiating device or the detonator separately from other explosives and one or two detonators will be sufficient for further investigation. Inform the station master that the explosives are there in the train if the journey is happening through the train. So these are very very important steps that as forensic scientist or as investigating officer that you have to be all cautious with while dealing with the scene of blast or explosion. Dear students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. In this module, we have learned about the overall rules for evidence collection which need to be followed when you are going to a scene where explosion has happened. You have to keep in mind that before evidence is collected, it is very important to make sure that there are no suspected dormant devices present. We also learned the specially trained dogs can be used to detect explosives and they are very oftenly used. These dogs are trained to use their exceptional sense of smell to detect and locate the presence of even the slightest traces of explosive material and they are called as sniffer dogs. 
We have also studied there are some electronic sniffer devices and these are also very similar to sniffer dogs and they are helpful in detecting explosives. Plastic explosives are not easily detected by these devices and in such cases canines can serve well. We also studied that x-ray techniques are being frequently used in the detection of explosive devices and they are again very very helpful. And you should always keep in mind that while collecting the post blast explosive residue evidence, search for the post blast debris, search farther from the site of explosion, collect the electrical components of the explosive devices also, collect the iron nails and ball bearings and collect the cloth pin if it is found. We also studied that water soluble explosive and volatile residue should be packed in airtight containers. While forwarding the explosive evidence to the laboratory, always send the evidence along with the forwarding letter. And we also studied that all the containers which you are forwarding should be labeled before sending. So dear students, all this knowledge will be very very helpful to you when you are investing such a case.